In this video series, we have gone over many of the key aspects of nanograv, and how we are trying to detect gravitational waves through pulsar timing. We've talked about what gravitational waves are, what pulsars are, and how the repeating signals from pulsars are affected by and contain information about gravitational waves. And finally, we've talked about how we use some of the world's best radio telescopes to measure these pulsar signals. However, the gravitational wave signal we are trying to measure is very weak and very difficult to detect. And we must understand everything else that can possibly be affecting this pulsar signal if we hope to see the gravitational wave effect. So even with all of the tools and techniques that we've talked about, there are a number of obstacles that must be overcome before our pulsar timing array is sensitive enough to detect these gravitational waves. Fortunately, the Nanograv collaboration includes a wide range of professors and students with different areas of expertise who are all working together to solve these problems. For instance, we have a number of pulsar astronomers who are involved in the actual pulsar observations. Finding and improving the timing models for our individual pulsars so we can accurately predict when each pulse should arrive at the Earth searching for new pulsars, and studying the properties of the pulsars themselves. And this can help us identify the physical causes of noise in the pulsar signal, and hopefully show us ways that we can account for or mitigate these noise sources. So we have a number of pulsar astronomers that are working on all of these different questions. In the last video, we talked a little bit about the interstellar medium, the dust and gases in the Milky Way, and how these things affect our pulsar signals. Measuring and accounting for these effects is going to be essential for detecting gravitational waves, and a number of members of Nanograv are working on exactly this, using pulsars to actually study the interstellar medium. Now, part of this requires the development of new specialized instrumentation for our radio telescopes. So we actually have the capability of measuring what we need to in order to account for the interstellar medium. And we have members that are actually designing and building these kinds of systems. There are also many data analysis challenges that we face with detecting gravitational waves. Starting from the raw, noisy output of our radio telescopes and trying to squeeze every bit of real signal out while filtering out all of the noise to get the most accurate arrival time for our pulsar signal is no easy task. Part of this includes modeling all of the different physical processes which could affect our pulsar signal and then fitting out these parts that we don't want. Only then can we start to search for the gravitational wave signal between all of our pulsars. Each of these steps requires complex computer algorithms, and we have different groups that are working on how to improve how we do these calculations. We also have experts who are looking at what kinds of gravitational wave signals we expect to see. Orbiting supermassive black holes are expected to be the main source of the low frequency gravitational waves that our pulsar timing array is sensitive to, but how many and how strong are the signals that we expect to see from these kinds of systems? Will we be able to resolve many individual systems? Or will we see a gravitational wave background from all of these systems overlapping with each other? We could also detect other sources. Gravitational wave relics from the very early universe, or possibly signals from cosmic strings, which are theorized regions of tightly wound space-time. These different sources will produce different signals, so how do we search for each of these specific signals in our data? We also want to ask what we can learn about the fundamental properties of gravitational waves themselves. All of these questions and others are being researched by members of Nanograv. So overall, the Nanograv collaboration has a wide variety of experts working on all of these different questions. 
And in addition to the more experienced faculty, NanoGrav includes many postdoctoral scholars, graduate students, undergrads, and even high school students who are all involved in active research. One of the great things about the NanoGrav collaboration is that the more senior researchers always seem to be not only willing, but enthusiastic in helping students with their questions and helping them get into their own research. On that note, the members of NanoGrav support a number of major outreach programs, including the Arecibo Remote Command Center, the Pulsar Search Collaboratory, and the Mid-Atlantic Relativistic Initiative in Education. These projects are aimed at helping to get high school students and undergraduate students involved with real research early on. And this research is making an actual contribution to the scientific community. They operate the telescopes, they analyze the data, and they make the discoveries. And already, dozens of new pulsars have been discovered by high school students and undergraduate students in these programs. And a few of these pulsars are actually stable enough to be added to our pulsar timing array. So this is an example of one of the pulsars that was discovered by some of these students. And we actually see the pulsar profile that they identified and they discovered. And many of these students have gone on from these programs to pursue careers not only in astronomy, but also in other science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields, which is fantastic to see. Now, the NanoGrav collaboration is not the only group trying to detect gravitational waves through pulsar timing. There are similar collaborations using radio telescopes in Europe, the European Pulsar Timing Array, and in Australia, the Parkes Pulsar Timing Array. Rather than having each group work in isolation, the International Pulsar Timing Array, or IPTA, was formed as a partnership between these three collaborations, allowing for the exchange of ideas, computer algorithms, and telescope data. This photograph was taken last year at the IPTA conference in Kayama, Australia, and there are members here not only of NanoGrav, but also of the European Pulsar Timing Array and the Parkes Pulsar Timing Array. And everyone in this international collaboration is excited to work together to try to detect gravitational waves. A number of members of NanoGrav, through these kind of partnerships, have also been able to take part in study abroad programs or conducted research at partner institutions that are overseas. And through these international partnerships and by sharing our data, we will be able to detect gravitational waves much sooner than we otherwise would. We also want the general public to help out with this, with this effort through the Einstein at Home program, which you can install on your computer. And this program uses the idle time on your computer when the screensaver is running to search for new pulsars using data from the Arecibo Observatory, as well as from the Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope and the LIGO Gravitational Wave Detector. So when you're not using your computer, this screensaver will pop up. And when it does, your computer will actually start to analyze data from our telescopes to try to help us find new pulsars. So by detecting new pulsars, we are better able to detect gravitational waves. So this is a, a real way that you can get involved. And you can also help more generally by supporting funding for all types of basic research in the sciences, which is always a very important social thing to do. By using all of these resources, we should be able to detect gravitational waves within the next five to 10 years. So it is a very long-term project, but it's very worth it. By measuring these gravitational waves, we will have an entirely new way to study the universe. And now that we've gone over most of the main aspects of the NanoGrav collaboration, we will continue to discuss more of the details of this exciting project in future videos.